How's it going, guys? Welcome to part four. I mean, part four. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic today. Of my LS swap, my Land Cruiser. Now I know I keep calling it an LS. It's a five three. Don't bust my balls over it. Today we're going to work on the shifter and shift selector. I've worked on a few other things in the meantime. I've kind of cleaned up the wiring a little bit more, figured out that I needed a, a lot more stuff to do. There's a lot more to do with wiring than I initially thought. I have to get a, a CAN-based reverse module or reverse relay module uh, to make the reverse lights work, but that's further down the road. Today we're going to work on the shift linkage. Now, initially I wanted to go cable. Um, the uh, all the, the trucks that come with 6L80s, the SUVs, most of those are cable operated. The transmission came with this piece of shift linkage, which I almost scrapped. It's a good thing I didn't. Uh, the best way for me to do this is actually not to run a cable, is to run a uh, this, this stiff this rod. Uh, I have decided to get an early FJ80, like a 9192 or 3F power truck shifter assembly, because it has an extra, uh, an extra detent. Which, had, which utilizes all of the 6L80's detents. I'm not worried about tap shift with this, this is not a performance vehicle, but I'd like to utilize all of the transmission's functions if I could. Uh, unfortunately, the factory shift shifter, the arm com this arm comes out on this side, uh, which is the wrong side for the 6L80. It's gonna cause some problems. What I've decided to do is I've cut a hole in the bottom here, and I've removed the shaft, which is here, and I'm going to have to probably cob this apart, like kind of trim this down to, just, it's kind of got a keyed way, it's kind of hard to see. But I'm going to have to, to force, the, like to grind that further down uh, so that the arm will fit on there a little bit better. Uh, so that I can bolt the arm and the factory uh, shift lever to this rod so that way it moves in conjunction. Because as you can see, that fits well, but there's not any uh, room for that to fit. So, get some work ahead of me. We're gonna kinda of go through how I'm going to do that. All right, so I've got this kind of shaved down right here. Uh, I used a bench grinder and my air saw. Uh, this, I've obviously much better ways to do that. But here's that slot I was talking about. This was originally half that depth. So this slides on, and now it goes all the way through. Um, I probably could go a little further with this, but I don't think it'll be ne necessary. But the the arm that comes from the shifter handle itself is also keyed this way. So that way, when you put this in. Uh, they'll be right next to each other instead of this being on the opposite side over here. All right, I've got the shifters. I wouldn't say done, but further. This is the shifter I made. I modified, I should say. So I cut my hole, which is probably too big, which I'll have to do something with. And there's where the original one came out. Here's the original one. So you can see, uh, you're basically just flipping sides of the transmission. Now, I might have to take this off a bunch more and bend this or cut this or mount the shift linkage to this. Uh, this is the preliminary, uh, however, uh, what's nice is I just was able to put the hardware on the other side. There's no play, there's no slop in the shifter. It moves just fine. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of math to figure out the swing of this, the range of this versus the one on the transmission, and I can adjust both this and the one on the transmission according. But this is a pretty easy way to do it. I've probably got about 45 minutes in all of this so far, which is really easy. Now none of these trucks were cut for a shift uh, for a shift arm to come through the tunnel on the left side, just the right side. So what we're gonna do is I've got I took the arm off the shifter, it's sitting here loosely, and I'm tracing the hole so I can cut the hole in the body. As you can see, I've uh, kind of traced the hole. There's the original hole. I'm not gonna cut it that big. There's no real reason to. So this is the entire range. I'll be able to hopefully make a boot to fit this so that I don't let any moisture or debris or dust come into the cabin. All right, I've got my hole crudely cut. Not too happy with the way it came out, but it fits and it will serve its purpose. So let's test fit this shifter. Oh, let's see how this fits. So we gotta fit this shift linkage in first, the shift arm. Might take a little bit of finagling. Some harness in the way. I think it 
bitch pretty good. All right, it's lined up right there. There's full range, so I don't need to trim anything else. So now I just gotta kind of seal up the holes that I, that I have left and uh, make the arm attached to both the transmission and the shifter. All right, so this might look confusing, but this piece here is the G8 linkage, which I'm gonna use and cut and modify. And this is just a measuring rod. So what I did is I attached this to the uh, transmission and I manually shifted it from park through every detent. So there's park, reverse, neutral, drive, and so on and so forth. And what this does is this measures the swing of this arm, the range. So then I did the same thing with this, attaching it to the shifter, because I want to make sure that they're pretty close. So this is park, this is uh, reverse, and that is neutral. I, the rest of it is kind of unnecessary because the shifter itself doesn't have any detents. So as you can see, it's pretty close, however, the, uh, the G8 has a, a little bit longer throw than the factory, uh, factory shifter does. So we're going to kind of go with it and see how it works, but this is going to determine how I mount this rod here to the factory shifter. So here's the shifter that I've modified. There's where the arm is now, the hole I've cut very crudely. Not, I'm not good at this. Uh, this is the original hole it came out of. I'll do something to seal this up. This is the uh, shift selector rod from a Pontiac G8. And what I've done is I, I marked a part on the uh, bottom of the truck and I moved, I don't know if you guys can see this, I moved the uh, selector from park to reverse, neutral, drive, and every, all the detents further down. And this gave me a, a measure of how far that is with this distance here. And then I did the same thing on this piece of scrap uh, with the this factory shifter and it turns out that the Park, reverse, and neutral, which are the most important, those are almost identical. So I think I'm not going to have to change the length of this arm or the length of this arm. I think that I will just be able to attach the two sides. To do that, I just scrounge around. I have lots of junk in my garage. Uh, I don't throw anything away. I probably should. This is a uh, cut piece of BMW shift selector rod, and it just happens to fit this the factory arm just perfect. But obviously it's too deep, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Grind this down a little bit. I'm actually just going to thread this. I'm going to cut the tip off. Ha, huh, that's what she said. I'm going to cut the tip off, and then I'm going to thread this section here and put a nut on it. Now, what I'm going to, I've already marked it. Well, I did, I had it marked. Uh, I marked it to, to about here. I'm going to leave a little gap so that way it's not super tight on here and it'll still move freely. So I've got this done. Uh, this is, I just cut the tip off and uh, threaded this rod. It fits perfectly in here. We'll get to that later. But now I noticed that there are some differences between the shifters. Here's the original one from the truck. Uh, this is the one that I modified. So I'm gonna have to swap this uh, yaw sensor over. And some of the wiring connectors are different. I don't know that it's gonna make a big difference, but I'm gonna make sure that uh, if it does make a difference, it's there. And if it doesn't, well, I just wasted my time. I'd rather waste my time than do something twice. So I've got the shift, the modified shifter with everything swapped over, the yaw sensor. I had to switch a lot of the interlock and the illumination. All the connectors are different from the early 80 series to the later. So everything swapped over. This is kind of loosely bolted in. So now we're going to go underneath and measure the length for the shift selector rod. So I've got the G8 shifter rod uh, mounted to the transmission where the where it normally would be, and I can I have I actually cut it a little short and I slid it into the BMW shifter. It's kind of hard to see. Here, I'm blocking it. Uh, so, they're both in park. The shifter's in park. I got a little play here uh, by design. Uh, this comes pretty close to the top of this transfer case adapter. Actually, that's the transmission, but uh, I still think there's enough room here. It's about a quarter. I can fit my finger through there. So, I'm going to tack this together because they're both in park right now. And if I tack this together, uh, it should shift just fine, and then I'll finish welding it up. After a lot of back and forth, uh, up and down, into the truck, out of the truck, underneath the truck, this is what I have come up with as far as the shift linkage. Here's the 6L80. Uh, this is the arm that comes on like a G8, and that rod, which I trimmed and cut and fit inside of this BMW uh, shift selector rod, which... It used to be smooth all the way across the top here. I don't know if you can see that, but I uh, I, thre I cut the tip off, circumcised it, and then I uh, threaded it. 
So that way it has a perfect fit inside the, this is a factory shift arm here, which I've cut and welded to this, made this bracket. This bolts to two holes that I have uh, drilled in the cut arm, the remnants of this, uh, underneath the truck. For whatever reason, I had the idea, I had, the, I had it in my head that this had to be leveled, or this rod had to be level. It does not need to be level. In fact, uh, in this situation, if it's level, the transmission shifter moves a lot further for every detent than the car shifter. Uh, it was it was grossly off when I made it that way. So uh, I didn't really I could have applied some math here, but I didn't really feel like doing it the right way. So I did it the trial and error way, which probably wasted a lot of time. But this works perfect. So I'm gonna put this back in the car. I'm probably gonna paint it up and everything, and then bolt the interior, put the interior back together. Now that I've got that bracket installed, which you can see right there, uh, it's mounted to that modified shift arm, which actually I, I inverted 180 degrees to kind of kick it back. That way most of the range of motion uh, is, is used front to back instead of down or up. There's the shift arm, and you can see it mounted to the transmission. We're going to go inside and see how this feels. Pardon the mess. Well, we're going to see how this feels after I press the shift in the lock. Oh, it feels awesome. So the lower detents are a little off. There's not really much uh, I can do about that. It's just the spacing in the shifter. Uh, I, if it becomes a problem, once this is all put together, I'll probably address it. But I'm good. Park through drive is good. And I can use tap shift to select gear once this is all installed anyway. So I'd like to apologize for the uh, mess of the interior. As uh, most project cars go, they don't stay clean. So now we're going to check to see, make sure what the shifter shows is what the ECM sees. So as I move this through the gears, we're going to connect my scan tool and verify that uh, the, each position is correct. So I've got my scan tool hooked up, key on. We're going to go through the process of making sure we have good communication. This is going to probably take a while. And let's do auto read. And there's the GM VIN from the PCM that's in here. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this came out of a Yukon. Uh, I don't know why that matters. I'm just going to kind of guess with a lot of this because obviously we are in a Land Cruiser, not a Yukon. All right, let's go to Diagnosis, Control Unit, Engine Control Module, and Live Data. Um, automatic Transmission. A lot of this is just a guess. I just want to see where it, what it's requesting here. Okay. So that doesn't do anything. Let's try this. Now I've wired. I've got all all of most of the harnesses is wired, but it's not uh, finished or nice. I'll throw that show that in the next video. I just want to see where it shows. There we go, park neutral position switch. So, now it's in gear, that's reverse. Let's go to neutral, park neutral, and then I move down into drive, and it doesn't show me what position it's in from that point on, but there's park, reverse, neutral. So. Uh, the transmission is, the, the range is correct between the shifter and the transmission. That's what I really wanted to show you guys. 
So that wasn't too bad. Uh, that was pretty bad. Compared to everything else that in this swap, that was probably one of the more challenging aspects, but it's done, uh, and hopefully what I've showed you is going to make your, your swap a little bit easier. Don't forget to subscribe. The next video will probably have this thing cranking. We're going to focus on wiring, communication, PCM stuff, the good stuff. I mean, cranking and maybe even firing. We'll see. Subscribe for more videos so you don't have to keep searching. Talk to you guys later.